Good morning. It is Thursday, the 1st of September, 2022. Thursday in the week of Trinity 11. Uh, we're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, bolstered by 1662. That means we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 95 is the invitatory psalm. It's an invitation to worship, and a wonderful invitation to worship. It calls us for our minds to be filled with an awareness of the greatness of God, and still more wonderfully, that he has freely uh, chosen us, undeserving as we are, to be his own people. Freely he has bestowed his love upon us. And uh, in the perspective that the thought of that should fill our hearts with awe and reverence and delight and faith and love. 
Um, and uh, it should also move us to open our ears, uh, to hear his voice, uh, to take his word to heart, uh, to learn his ways and to walk in them, that we may share in the rest and peace uh, which he has designed for us. Today, on the first day of the month, we begin the Psalter anew on page 345, the first five Psalms. Psalms 1 and 2 are kind of an introduction to the Psalter. Psalm 1 sets before us the two ways um, uh, in which we may live our lives, um, a way of obedience to God's law leading to life, and a way of rebellion leading to death. Blessed is the man that hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, and hath not sat in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law will he exercise himself day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the water side, that will bring forth his fruit in due season. His leaf also shall not wither, and look whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. As for the ungodly, it is not so with them. But they are like the chaff, which the wind scattereth away from the face of the earth. Therefore the ungodly shall not be able to stand in the judgment, neither the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, the way of the ungodly shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 1 uh, it treats this uh, two ways as a kind of abstraction. In Psalm 2 we see how they work out in history, in the conflict and triumph of the kingdom of God and of his Messiah, the Anointed One, against the rebellious kingdoms of the world. Why do the heathen so furiously rage together? And why do the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth stand up and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his Anointed, his Messiah, his Christ. Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that dwelleth in heaven shall laugh them to scorn. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. And now we hear the, the, uh, the, the voice of Christ. I will rehearse the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Desire of me and I shall give thee the nations for thine inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt bruise them with a rod of iron, and break them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye that are judges of the earth. Serve the Lord in fear, and rejoice unto him with reverence. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and so ye perish from the right way, if his wrath be kindled, yea, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So the subject matter of the Psalms has been set before us. Uh, we have had this promise of blessing to those who put their trust in God. And now we uh, turn in these opening Psalms to hear the voice of of the righteous servant of the Lord, who is in the final analysis, none other than Christ himself, speaking to us through the psalmist's voice, um, speaking to us in the midst of his sufferings and struggle um, with the enemies of God's kingdom. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise against me. Many one there be that say of my soul, there is no help for him in his God. But thou, O Lord, art my defender, Thou art my worship, and the lifter up of my head. I did call upon the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept, there is his death and burial, and rose up again, there is his resurrection. For the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid for ten thousands of the people that have set themselves against me round about. Up, Lord, and help me, O my God, for thou smitest all mine enemies upon the cheekbone, Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord, and his blessing is upon thy people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 4 rebukes those who have turned to false gods. 
It exhorts uh, the faithful not to give way to exasperation or anxiety, but to turn to the Lord. And it concludes with an assurance of security in time of tribulation. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy upon me and hearken unto my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye blaspheme mine honor and have such pleasure in vanity and seek after falsehood? Know this also, that the Lord hath chosen to himself the man that is godly. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart and in your chamber and be still. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. Yea, more than when their corn and wine and oil increase. I will lay me down in peace and take my rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest me dwell in safety. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 5 is another prayer of the psalmist, the faithful servant of God's kingdom, against his enemies. And here is brought into clear uh, perspective uh, the righteous character of God and his love of those who are righteous, his care of those who are righteous. Ponder my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. O hearken thou unto the voice of my calling, my King and my God. For unto thee will I make my prayer. My voice shalt thou hear betimes, O Lord. Early in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. For thou art the God that hast no pleasure in wickedness, neither shall any evil dwell with thee. He has no pleasure in wickedness. Such as be foolish shall not stand in thy sight, for thou hatest all them that work iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak lies. The Lord shall abhor, will abhor the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But as for me and the multitude of thy mercy, I will come into thine house, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way plain before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward parts are very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them perish through their own imaginations. Cast them out in the multitude of their ungodliness, for they have rebelled against thee. And let all them that put their trust in thee rejoice. They shall ever be giving of thanks, because thou defendest them. They that love thy name shall be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt give thy blessing unto the righteous, and with thy favorable kindness wilt thou defend him as with a shield. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. It is of the very nature of God that he must uphold the good against the evil, the righteous against the wicked, and on his righteousness and goodness. Therefore, we may put our trust without any kind of reserve. Whatever tribulations we suffer now in the cause of right, um, uh, they will shall not be in vain. Here beginneth the second chapter of the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Um, we were just reading Jeremiah, the prophet of the last days of um of the kingdom of Judah. Now with Ezekiel, we move into the time of exile. Um, and uh, in chapter two, we have an account or part of the account of the call of the prophet. Uh, chapter one described how the Lord appeared first in a kind of uh, chariot throne um, uh, surrounded by the four living creatures. And he said unto me, son of man, Stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me up upon my feet, that I heard them that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are impudent children, and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, 
whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious, like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth, and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations, and mourning, and woe. Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Here endeth the first lesson. So a word full of lamentations and woe that nonetheless uh, tastes as sweet as honey. Um, what a wonderful and uh, uh, intriguing uh, ex uh, image that is. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here beginneth the 14th verse of the 12th chapter of the second epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. And I think I read part of this yesterday, uh, but today we actually are meant to read this and chapter 13 and so bring uh, the account, uh, of the reading of Second Corinthians to conclusion. And here in these final passages, um, uh, Paul expresses his concern uh, about opposition to him um, within the Corinthian church from at least some of them and some final admonitions. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. And I will not be burdensome to, your, to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children are not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Again, think that we, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you. We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not. Lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults. And lest, when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall be wail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. It's quoting Deuteronomy um, 19, 15 there. I told you before and foretell you as if I were present the second time. 
And being absent now, I write to them which heretofore have sinned, and to all other, that if I come again, I will not spare. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you were is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong. In this also we wish even your perfection. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness, according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. A wonderful example of how even a difficult uh, passage in Paul uh, can yield something as plain and wonderful as that final verse, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion, the fellowship, the participation of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us confess our faith in God, reciting the Apostles' Creed, the creed of our baptism, as we renew our loyalty and our commitment to the triune God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, as members of one body in Christ, let us commend ourselves and each other and the whole church and people of God to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health among all nations, that the whole earth may be filled with his glory. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, militant here upon earth, for its unity in the truth of the gospel and in brotherly love. I bid your prayers for um, this country of ours and all countries, in their peace, order, and good government, 
the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. But your prayers, especially for the Uyghurs of Sinjin, uh, for the peoples of Yemen, for Eritrea, Ethiopia, Syria, and Ukraine. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches among all nations, for their faithfulness of their witness and worship, for their fruitfulness and good works of hope and charity, uh, for their steadfastness under the seductions and persecutions of this unbelieving world, and for those who suffer in mind, body, or estate, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions, Bid your prayers for those in palliative care or hospice care, those who are dying, for those who are recovering from surgery or undergoing it, uh, for those dealing with the challenge of sobriety, those suffering uh, critical illness, debilitating infirmity, chronic pain, cognitive impairment, and uh, difficult therapies for orphans and widows, for the abandoned and the abused, for the hungry and the homeless, for prisoners and captives, for refugees, for the wounded, uh, for the grieving, for the dying, for all women in childbirth, all women expecting children and the children they're expecting, all young children infants and young children and their parents, for those dealing with the burdens of anxiety, depression, and mental illness, for caregivers and healthcare workers, for all doctors and nurses, for all those who've departed this life in the faith of Christ, that we with them may rise to glory. And this day, that being safe under the protection of the Almighty God, uh, guided by his Holy Word, strengthened by his Holy Spirit, we may serve and please him in everything that we do, being renewed in the likeness of his Son, that when he comes again, we may be found in him. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee and do thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, who declarest the almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, May not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, I'm sorry, Jude has made no appearance here this morning. Um, he he uh, obviously uh, decided that yesterday was quite enough for y'all. Uh, I'm sure he'll be back when when he chooses. Uh, those last verses from that difficult second chapter of Corinthians. 
be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Indeed, and as we say in the prayer book version of that verse, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers according to his perfect will.